videos. We are back for day four, I believe, of the Hockey Gods mural. I'm actually sitting in front of another one of my murals I've done up here at Large Plain. It's probably my favorite one that I've done so far and definitely the largest. I think this is a 12 by 10 wall, which I did all with a brush. So, uh, it kind of took me a while. <laughs> oh, we got it done. But, uh, back to the agenda at hand. We are actually working again, of course, on the Hot Yods mural. And uh, I figured I'd go over, go over some of my goals with you guys tonight. So first off, I'm going to start laying down all of my skin tone colors for all of the characters. I am going to fix something that I screwed up last week, but uh, that's the beauty of acrylics. Anything can be fixed. Uh, and then depending on how that goes and how I'm feeling towards the end of the night, we may start on the uniforms and maybe a couple other things. We'll see how quickly I can get through this. But uh, for now, let's uh, mix up some skin tone colors. I'll meet you back over in the dining room and we'll get started. See you there. Bye. Hey dudes. We are back in the dining room and ready to get started. And I'm gonna mix up some skin tone. So I figured I'd give you a little, uh, you know, bull crap uh, color theory. So let's do that. So today I'm going to be painting uh, Caucasian skin, right? And most skin tones are just a variant of like, two or three, you know, basic colors. So we're gonna go for a more pale skin today and uh, I'll show you how to mix it up. So I'm going to be using, and I, I have a whole plethora of colors we can choose from and tint as we go along. It's kind of a, an eyeball thing, but I've got an orange, a fuchsia, and a blue. And then my trusty white. And it's mostly gonna be orange. With about half that amount of fuchsia, maybe a little less. We'll go with that for the moment. And then the itsiest, bitsiest, teensiest drop of blue. So what blue does is actually neutralize some of those crazier colors, right? So the bright orange and the fuchsia should, in theory, turn to like a brown color. Brown-ish. This is gonna be kind of like a, a peachy pink, but the blue adds a little bit of cool tone to it. And because I'm using this as more of a glaze, over top of what's already there, which is a yellow. This is only gonna give a hint of that color. But as you can see, that's already kind of a, a fleshy color. And truthfully, I don't even think I'm gonna add white to it. So let's get to painting. All right, so my plan is to go in with that skin tone that I just made over there and put it on all the little cherubs, the faces and hands of these guys. And uh, I'm gonna be adding water to that mixture also. I forgot to tell you guys in that last clip. But I'm gonna use it as a glaze like I did this yellow. So before we start that, I think I'm gonna take this jacket off because it means a little too much to me. But uh, if you wanna see any more about it, like comment below. Maybe I'll talk about it later, so. Any hoozle, let's get back to arting. Here we go.
Okay, so I got my first like two-ish layers of the skin tone glaze down. So we need to let that dry. Um, it looks a little patchy right now. It looks kind of crazy. We are entering the ugly stage. Uh, so everything's gonna look a little like crazy for a minute, but that's the beauty of acrylics. And that's another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So actually this piece of cloth that runs down along and out like this, I screwed that up last week. That's supposed to be green. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna we're gonna correct that. But the beauty of acrylics is when you're not using it as a glaze like I am and you can see everything, it's actually really opaque, which means you can't see through it, which lends itself really well to covering up mistakes and blending and adding layers. And that's the thing with acrylics. You need layers. You can't do what you can do with oils with acrylics. This medium specifically looks much, much better the more you build up. So that's what we're working on now. So if your painting looks kind of crazy in the middle, you're on the right track. So let me show you what I've done so far. So I'm gonna try to mix up this green. It's supposed to be like a minty, almost seafoam green. And we'll get started on that. So let's do that. Okie doke. So I mixed up my green. It is fairly thick because we are trying to cover up this red. So I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna put down a few layers and build it up kind of slowly. And then uh, we'll see how that goes. So I've got this super watery dark gray. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's a really, really watery glaze because the black is really potent. But I'm going to go all over Lemieux's uniform and then we'll go over only Crosby's pants on the other side with this color. And it's like the local colors that we talked about in the last episode, which is just basically the base color just to get one layer of acrylic down so I can build on top of it. So, I'm gonna go do that. Okay, so I got the first layer of 
what I was hoping would be a gray down, but it turned out to be more of a black. So we just kind of ran with it. We did more of a wash than I was expecting to. But uh, it's pretty patchy, which is totally fine because it's the first like base layer of that. It'll all get covered up eventually, but it's decent for now. Like I said, it's going through its ugly phase. It's like going through its teenage years. But it'll get better, trust the process. But uh, I'm gonna zoom in. I'll show you guys what I mean and uh, show you how kind of patchy and weird it looks. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go back in on the review side and I'm going to touch up on the skin of the chair right underneath him where the black kind of seeped down. Again, the beauty of acrylics. And then I'm going to put another layer on the piece of green fabric that we fixed earlier. And then I think we're going to call it a night. But uh, let's get to that. and. Uh, We'll check back in in a minute. It's totally the same night and everything. I look definitely the same as I did in the last shot. Anyway, so I mixed up some blue and I'm going to start working on the background a little bit and then uh, we'll move on to the next bit. So let's get to get. So I mixed up a couple couple different shades of green and uh, as you can see by the fact that I can actually turn it upside down, we are getting to the, the thicker layers so we're building up more layers. So I'm going to work on more of the background over here, the grassy knoll behind him. And the grassy knoll! The grassy knoll! <laughs> so keep building up the layers, so let's do that.
I just finished up the couple of green layers on the, the hill on the other side. I reinforced some of my line work on the red cloth behind everybody on this side with a sharpie. Um, oh, I also mixed up some new red colors, some thicker colors to go along with that. So now I'm going to add some dimension to this red cloth. And uh, probably also behind me. Use the green from the other side to start reinforcing all the shapes on this like green piece here. So we're gonna do that now. So the next step that I'm going to work on is adding some depth to the skin tones. So everyone's skin actually has a, a myriad of colors in them. There's a lot of colors in flesh. And the three main colors that I'm going to start with are pink, yellow, and blue. So pink will represent where like the blood is closest to the surface, so like your cheeks, your nose, your chin, your ears, your knuckles, your elbows, anywhere that you would add like a blush to. The yellow is going to go anywhere on the body where it would be the highest point, so where the light would reflect the most. So like the bridge of the nose, the forehead, the, the highest points of the cheeks the highest points of the shoulders, the collarbones. And then, of course, my blue will act as my shadow. So, in between creases in arms, underneath the chin, uh, the eye sockets around there. And basically, these will be hidden, not really hidden, but blended in to another glazing that goes on top of it afterwards. But tonight, we're gonna start with these and uh, we'll go from there. So, let's get started.
so I just finished the details, the like second or third layers on this side, so adding some depth into the skin, adding some shadow, and uh, I think it's really starting to pop. We are slowly but surely coming out of the, uh, the ugly stage. Then again, maybe we're still in the ugly stage. I can't really tell. Either way, it's taken a turn, and I'm uh, fairly happy with the way it turned out. So that's about it for this evening. We're gonna pack up and get out of here. That's a wrap on days four and five. And uh, I think I've made some pretty good progress. It's really starting to look the way I want it to. So we're gonna get to getting, pack up and get out of here. Your girl is sleeping. See you next time.